All right. To first understand this, I think I'm going to have to have just a basic, you know, showing how these things relate. And to do that, I'm going to back this down to something that's something like this. First, I'll go to object mode. That way, preview can be adjusted. And I'll adjust the preview so it's at maybe level two. Okay. Now, keep in mind that this is my original base mesh. So if I add something to this, it will totally blow up. So please don't ever do that. But now I can use this sort of as my base mesh. I just can't add anything to the original original. I can't add an edge loop anywhere. I can't extrude anything. So just kind of know that. That's the rules. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is go into the camera. And I'm also going to have my UVs showing. Oops, split area again. Someday I'll write a little thing for that so it just automatically splits. But here, I'm going to have to highlight all my faces and go to Image, New Image. And I'm going to call this normal map example. Then I'm going to choose 2048 by 2048. And then choose alpha off and hit OK. OK, so now it has to have a map in order for this to work. Good. Now, under baking, so under the camera, under bake, I'm going to say bake normals, bake from multi res, and I'm just going to hit bake. Now, your normals are usually by default not smooth. And if you, if you see what this does, if a normal from one surface to the next doesn't have its angle quite right, it's going to produce something like this. So, in order to calculate better normals, all you do is have, highlight all your faces and choose shading smooth. Now, I like to recalculate and then go shading smooth myself. Okay, let's bake again. And there we go. And you can see things in here like these changes, these very weird colored attributes in here. And what those are, those bits are folded in geometry, and that's what it can't calculate. So that's why you're not getting a smooth enough map. So that's why I said you always have to kind of smooth out the area, then add detail to the form, or you're going to get little bits and pieces like this. Well, to see this uh, real time within Blender, hit N on the keyboard. Well, first off, let's join these areas. N on the keyboard. Let's go to display and choose uh, under shading. We're going to choose GLSL. Okay. We still have a little bit of work to do here. We have to make a material. So here's my material tab. I'll call this material uh, something like normal map sample. With that, we can go and add the texture to it. So the texture, the texture is actually located on the UVs right now. And I know that's confusing as all get up, 
So here, we're just going to split this area just to get back to the UVs. And then we have to export this. So what I do is I go save image as. And I'm going to save this on my hard drive somewhere. We'll call it normal map example. And I like to make it a target myself. Pings are quite lossy. Okay, and now what I can do is go new texture from an image or a movie and open it up. There we go. And there's a few options down here. Here's a normal. We want to check that. For the coordinates, I like using UV, and then I pick the UV, UV texture. UV texture is from this object. If you only have one object of the scene, you don't have to worry about it. But just know that there might be a few of these in here, and there's a way to rename those. I'll show those later. So, And I'll show you the difference between coordinates UV and coordinates generated. Okay. So as you can see here, it's colored. Well, tangent shading. And there is another thing in here. Back on this one. We want object space. Take off color. And let's preview that material to see what it looks like. Okay. Now, the one thing about this, if you want to see what it really looks like there, you have to use generated. Uh, so if you use generated, go to plane. I think that's it. Let's see what else I'm missing here. Okay, take tangent shading off. Okay, so no tangent shading. There we go. We have a real-time preview, and that's what's important. If you do not have this preview, it will not work correctly at all. So Now, over here, if you switch back to UV... you'll see this weird thing going on. This is where it cannot calculate based upon UV because it's a preview. You're only going to be able to see it over here based upon UV. So that's the difference between UV and generated. Generated allows you to preview the material here. UV is going to be allowed to preview the material correctly over here. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, let's go back to object mode so I can choose my lowest res that I want and hit Alt Z and then voila. So Alt Z allows you to use the GLSL. Okay, well, let's look at this thing for a second. Okay, you can see that all these flat surfaces calculated very correctly, but the minute it starts to peak up on something that's really hard like this, that's where it's having a hard time. And if I choose another preview, it has a little bit better time, and et cetera, and so forth. As I go, I'm going to need a higher and higher base in order to have that normal map correctly display. But that's essentially how you do a normal map. Now we're going to look at, in the next video, what if I had an object that had something like this in the center as a base and had UVs to support it, what kind of detail do we get then? And that'll bridge the gap between 
uh, the understanding the importance of good modeling and the importance of knowing why UVs are important on the model. Okay. And it'll relate back to the skull sooner or later, but the skull is very easy because the skull has good topology. It already will support all the detail. I want I wanted to show something that doesn't have the topology and what the difference between that is. All right, so let's go into the next video where we can learn more.